Don't tell them it's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. Blessing that can happen to average man being. We don't know that. How do you know it's going to be okay? Yeah. Telling someone who's hungry, stop being hungry. <laughs> Just stop being hungry. Well, I haven't ate food. Stop. Don't worry about that. Just don't be hungry. <laughs> that, does, that doesn't take away the hunger. I need to eat something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a short video from Chat Day and Dampo Wat Kampai. One more time is that in the morning time, when you get up in the morning and then you start practice speaking English too. បាទសូមគោរពជ្រាបសួរលោកពុកណែបងប្អូនបានឃើញឲ្យខ្ញុំនិយាយភាសាអង់គ្លេសសុទ្ធហើយក៏ដូចជាសន្តនាជាមួយ
Maybe you make a mistake with grammar, maybe you make a mistake with pronunciation, but you can speak and you make that other people understand what you are talking about in English. You are great. For example, when you talk to foreigners, they come to Cambodia, even though you make a mistake with grammar or pronunciation, if they understand what you are talking, that's it. That is the point that we are learning English in order to make a communication. I know grammar, I know writing, I know it is important, but first thing that you have to do in order to sharpen your English speaking, start to speak word by word, phrase by phrase, little by little. For example, you learn one word, what can you speak with that word, right? So don't worry, just try to speak. At the first time, maybe you need to read it loudly first and then practice, put it in a real practice with your friend, okay? I, I know it, it's not easy. It's not easy to be able to speak English fluently or confidently, but it is not too difficult to speak. Just be yourself and try your best to speak. And, um, it's a great honor to be here, especially my students who want to give up their study. Oh. So. In Cambodia, there are many students, they want to learn, but they feel like they are poor mm -hmm. because uh, they are too poor to learn. Like when they are young, they have no opportunity to study, but when they get married, have children, their lifestyle is better. They really want to learn, but they have children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Pante, do you have any uh, dharma to encourage them, like the poor people, this thing they cannot learn, and some students, some people, they have children, they think that they are busy, they cannot learn, yeah. so what can we do? Yes, uh, we can all learn. Mm -hmm. Learning looks very different, you know, sometimes uh, it's not only about formal education, but there's a lot of informal education mm -hmm. that we learn, like coming here to Cambodia, learning how people say hello to each other or interact, the customs and the different kind of way things are done, this kind of more uh, like intuitive learning right interacting with people that's also a form of learning it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. in books so sometimes we think learning has to be at a school has to come from a book has to come from a teacher but you can learn so much even through your own experience learning art learning craftsmanship building things fixing things i think there's too much focus on this very formal academic kind of western style learning and we forget about the other kind of learning like the learning you get from your parents our parents teach us so much how to be a good person right also the monks they teach us how to be a good person nature teaches us we learn from looking around looking at the animals also but um i understand why people focus on the academic because they want a better life right they usually yeah. study academics or they study a different language because they want to make more money to provide uh for their family but now we have such a beautiful beautiful thing called the internet yeah. <laughs> you know basically if you can afford to go on the internet you can learn anything you want you don't even need to go to a school you don't need a diploma to speak english some people exactly, have exactly. many diplomas and their english is terrible <laughs> right master's degree in english yeah. but when you speak to them it's not good some people don't have a degree in english right and they speak very well Oh, yeah. right so it has nothing to do with the certificate the certificate doesn't really matter the certificate <laughs> is just kind of for you to show other people for you to get a job or to make yourself feel good but uh your own skills right your ability to communicate or your ability to do something well that is the proof right you are your own proof you don't need some external validation right i think young people always want external validation that's why they need likes, they need comments, they need shares, they need all these things. They want other people to tell them how great they are. <laughs> but you don't need other people. You know for yourself what level you're at, right? And you should know that little by little, uh, you're going to get better. So my advice to those people is that if you want to learn, use the internet. Oh. I mean, there's things like um, on YouTube and on TikTok and on Instagram, so many people are teaching for free, right? Like people yeah, are teaching yeah, but... for free. Even if you want to learn Buddhism, you can go to suttacentral.net and the entire Tipitaka is there in English, Spanish, in Thai, in uh, Pali, in so many languages. You can learn the teachings of the Buddha for free. So many monks are giving Dhamma talks on YouTube. You can listen to the teachings of the Buddha. 
So you can learn on your own at your own pace and it can look very different. You don't need uh, to go to a school. You don't need a formal education to be a smart person or a wise person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to give that encouragement for people really to take this opportunity of uh, the internet and also not to seek external validation, right? I think so much suffering in this world happens because we want someone else to approve or to say, oh, you're good, your English is good, or your math is good, or your history is good. You don't need other people praising you, right? You know for yourself how much you know and be confident in your own ability. Even if you only know three words in a language, right? You have to be confident in using those words. At least I know three, right? <laughs> These three, I feel good. So yes. I think that's my advice that I give people. Do you have any encouragement to uh, people who are poor yes, and yes. want to keep going? Yes, absolutely. Um, so in Los Angeles, where I taught high mm. school, mm. Um, we we teach in a very, uh, we say like a rough neighborhood, mm. meaning that uh, a lot of people are low income mm. and it's very difficult for them because a lot of my students also work sometimes mm. two jobs mm. and they also try to study and it's very difficult for them um, in Los Angeles where I teach. And uh, something I could add, because there's a lot of good advice already, um, mm -hmm. is um, pay attention to what mm. you're telling yourself. Mm. You know, like um, we, we need to, I guess, look at um, how you perceive yourself. So I have a students who feel, you know, I'm poor. Mm -hmm. um, I have a difficult life. I can't do it. Mm. You know, I don't have, um, I don't have like... Um, uh, a place to do it. I don't have, uh, you know, the money. I don't have like nice books. I don't have, <laughs> a, a, you know, a beautiful cafe where I mm -hmm. could study, you know, and they tell themselves this and then they don't try because mm -hmm. they feel like um, they're limited. Um, and I'm not saying that what they're going through isn't real because, mm -hmm. you know, if you have to work, that's real, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's actually uh, something that we have to actually uh, do. But if we feel like, hey, you know what? I have all these challenges, but I can do it. Mm. You know, I, I can do it. Like, I, I, I feel like, you know, I could find a way. And, you know, that's um, adding to what Bante uh, has said about the Internet, right? There are a lot of resources. There are a lot of free resources. There are teachers who teach for free. And there, there are ways that we could overcome you know, those things, maybe they're not always the best as, you know, people who have money, but there are ways if we believe that we can do it, you know, we'll find some ways to do it. Mm -hmm. But also on top of that, I do want to um, say that anyone who's listening, who has, um, who has the, the opportunity, mm -hmm. right, who has the resources, who has the money mm -hmm. um, to also think about creating programs and uh, that, 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 that can lift up people as well because the difficulty of learning will always be there. So, you know, anyone out there who has the resources, we should always think about creating systems and programs that also have access for all people. That's yeah. about right, okay. Yeah. One day, um, if uh, like the family or girlfriend, boyfriend or relationship, they uh, violence or domestic mm -hmm. violence um, is is there any dharma like teach them to motivate them not to do that mm. because I think this this uh, domestic violence is uh, around the world not only in Cambodia mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, what can we do for that uh, is there any teachings of the Buddha yes yeah, so the primary teaching of the Buddha is nonviolence mm -hmm. all the time no violence under any circumstance right there's no justified violence there's no such thing as uh, I love you so much, and so in order to show you that I love you, I'm going to hurt you or mistreat you or abuse you. Actually, no one has the right to abuse us. Mm -hmm. No one has the right to hurt us. Your parents are not allowed to abuse you, your boyfriend or husband or wife or your teachers. No one is allowed to abuse you. No one has that right, right? Uh, even, you know, uh, uh, we have to be very, very careful sometimes uh, because society tells us, you know, that it's okay for this person to hit you because they love you. That's how they express their feelings of love. But actually, if someone's abusing you, you have to actually finish the relationship. That's the truth about it. There's a lot of pressure in society to keep people together. But that's wrong, actually. There's a lot of things in society that are wrong. Society tells us to do drugs. Society tells us to be selfish. Society tells us to have hoard, 
a lot of things like money and possessions. All those things are actually wrong, but society teaches us. Society teaches us mm. to go to war and kill people. Mm. So just because society says to do something doesn't mean that it's right. It just means that everyone is agreeing to do wrong things. So to stay in an abusive relationship is wrong. Yeah. Sometimes maybe in the beginning you just need to assert yourself and say, no, this is enough. Enough is enough. Other times maybe you have to leave and completely end the relationship. And if things are very dangerous, maybe you need to talk to the authorities, right? Court or police or someone to help you or your friends. Uh, we shouldn't be scared to do the right thing, right? Even though there's a lot of pressure from society, especially for couples, they tell the women, right? Like, oh, don't get divorced or don't do this. Mm. And the husband's beating her all the time. That's easy for them to say because they're not the ones getting hit, <laughs> right? Yes. That's very easy for them to say. But if someone's abusing you, and your children are seeing that. Your children are also learning to abuse uh, other people too. So in the future, they're going to also hit their partners. So maybe you don't have the bravery to do it for yourself as a, as a woman or as a partner. But think about the people who are watching. If you allow yourself to get abused, everyone around you thinks like, oh, this is the right thing to do, right? So the next generation will also learn that. We need to stop this like uh, generational trauma. Mm -hmm. and say no we have to learn to say no and i know it's more difficult in asian culture to say no right <laughs> everything yes can i do for you yes 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 because more like group thinking community right interconnectedness uh but not all interconnectedness is good sometimes interconnectedness can be very bad right <laughs> it, it, there's some people who abuse the system right it's supposed to be a beautiful system of everyone helping each other but some people take advantage of the system uh, to hurt others and we have to be able to say no but it's very clear in the teachings of the buddha that there is no violence verbal or physical nothing nothing at all under any circumstances no one is allowed to hurt you so we have to remember this that no one has the right to hurt us not even us mm -hmm. we don't have the right to hurt ourselves either right because all beings want happiness all beings want to be healthy and secure mm. so sometimes it, i know it's very difficult and it's scary to tell this and assert yourself and do what you need to do. Mm. But that's part of the teachings of the Buddha that we need to do what's difficult, like studying, right? And doing your, and going to work, these things are difficult. Also, standing up against people who are abusing us is, is scary and it's difficult and there's a lot of pressure, but we need to do the difficult things. We need to do the hard things, if not for ourselves, for to change the society and to help mm. the future. Can I jump to some kind of, um, uh, you have, uh, I, I got the point like, uh, non-violence, Dharma. You have no right to hurt the other people. Uh, the other people have no right to hurt you, like uh, uh, physical and verbal action. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, you have no right to hurt me, but I have right to hurt you now. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you and me, we have no right to, mm -hmm. to hurt, like verbal and physical action. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Uh, mm -hmm. But nowadays, we sometimes we do not use physical body, we do not use speech, but we mm -hmm. use social media social media mm -hmm. right like this common oh, wow. hurtful common mm -hmm. and some so you have no right to hurt the other people by, by many way by yeah. any way not only verbal or physical mm -hmm. facebook shows all common <laughs> something like this very important chris i have a uh, one question because you have a uh, uh yeah um have you experienced like you are angry with uh, your partner or what uh, yes. What what what, sh what should you do? What oh, I mean, yeah. good point. Right. What yeah. can you share? Like for example, you have uh, you are angry. Or yes. You get First, I'll start with uh, I'm very lucky because my wife is a relationship coach. Oh. So she actually teaches people how to have wow. a healthy relationship. Oh. So I'm very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I asked the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, right. Just kidding. But what my wife, uh, what I, what the relationship we have is very safe because um, we accept that we will be angry sometimes mm -hmm. you know it's not about never being angry because mm -hmm. sometimes we are angry and sometimes uh, we try our best but we might say something hurtful mm -hmm. and what happens is um, we give each other some space mm -hmm. oh. and what happens is uh, well we, we we try not to also get angry on top of that you know, we don't react with more anger and the mm. other person reacts with even more anger and it gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. So um, sometimes I will get angry mm. and I'll say something that is hurtful. Mm. And then she will 
give some space. There will be some yeah. silence. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, and like mm. she doesn't just react right away. And then she gives me some time to kind of cool down. And I, I also try to cool down because I realize that I said something Ooh, hurtful. Yeah. Um, and then she will be honest with me. Like what Bonte said earlier about saying no, mm. you know, she will hold that boundary. Mm. She will say in a very calm way that, mm. hey, what you said really hurt me. Mm. You know, she will say that to me. Mm. And then also I have to practice again <laughs> not to get angry at that. You mm. know, I can't defend myself i have to listen to her mm. like oh okay yeah. i'm 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 sorry you know i have to learn how to apologize mm. so we give each other that space where we try not to react and mm. get even angrier mm -hmm. and then we try to talk about it <clears throat> in a very calm way okay. and then in the end you know i can see very clearly what i've done mm. and we make peace so yeah. it doesn't get worse You okay. know, so we always try to practice this process. So last one, uh, all of uh, three of you question, mm -hmm. um, what do you do when you are sad? But one day, um, mm -hmm. now maybe better, but uh, before when you, in the past, not not yet become a monk, mm -hmm. or right now, or whatever. So what what do you do when you feel sad or I mean in the yeah. before or right now whatever yeah right now uh, I haven't really felt too sad you know even though about eight people family members and close friends since I became a monk have died like my godmother my grandma uh, my cousin my brother one of my best friends my teacher almost every year since I've been a monk someone has died But I haven't really been sad. I've, I've been lucky enough to have good teachers and understand the Dhamma where I don't really feel sad. Mm -hmm. uh, but before, yes, I yeah. feel sad all the time, <laughs> very strongly. And what worked for me is like uh, going for a long walk or going for a long drive. So when I felt sad, instead of trying to fight it or distract myself, I let myself be with the sadness. Like I'm going to find time to actually see and understand the sadness so i'll go for a long walk you know <laughs> like two or three hours i'd go just walking any direction mm. and during that time i feel the sadness i let it come you know mm. and i experience it because many people they don't like that feeling it's uncomfortable mm. so they go drink or let's go dance to the movies or let's play video games or let me get on my phone <laughs> or they want someone to tell them nice things right like it's going to be okay it's going to be okay but You're running away from the sadness. Oh. Don't run away. Yeah. Don't try to hide it. You have to process, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go through this process. So I would go walking, and I was lucky. I always had a car ever since I was a teenager. So when I would feel really sad, especially at night, I get in my car, and I'll drive out, out of the city into nature, into the desert, mm -hmm. and just drive, 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 maybe for an hour, and then come back again another hour. And mm -hmm. during that time, no music, actually. Mm -hmm. Just being with the sadness, and I understand it. And then I was able to overcome it fast, right? Because I was facing it. I was facing my sadness. I was facing my fear. I was facing my pain. But I think sometimes our pain lasts too long or our sadness lasts a long time because we're trying to always hide it. We don't want to deal with it, right? It's like if your house is full of trash, instead of cleaning the trash, you just like cover things, but you never clean your house. So every time you come back home, the trash is there because you never cleaned it. And again, you're bothered. It's not until you clean your house that the trash will be gone and you'll be happy. So the same thing with your sadness. It's not until you face it. You have to face it, confront it, and be with it, and not try to distract yourself. And then you'll be able to overcome it. And for me, it was through walking and through driving that I was able to find that. But Chris, uh, what what do you do? I yes. think, but you are not sad. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy, happy you know, to be honest, um, ever since uh, meeting Bante and practicing Dhamma, it has helped me very much as well with mm. sadness. Um, but I, I still get sad. <laughs> and um, for me, I, I, I ride my bicycle. Oh, ah. It makes me very happy to ride a bicycle. Um, and also I journal. So I write, oh. you know, and a lot of times I just write to myself. I just write all my thoughts, you know. Mm. Um, whereas in the past, I think I would do something that was like what Bonte said, mm. hide my feelings and try to escape, mm. um, uh, especially by eating. <laughs> I would go and eat something like uh, unhealthy, you know, yeah. um, and, you know, I, I, and also um, just go hang out with friends and, and, and drink and things like that, you know. 
And so I now feel like I have healthy ways mm -hmm. to process the sadness, like Bonte oh. said, processing the sadness. And uh, yeah, I don't run away from it. You know, I do accept it, uh, forgive myself for feeling whatever I feel, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because it's natural. But I think the way that we um, respond to it, you know, to respond to it in a healthy way, I think mm -hmm. is, is something that I learned recently, practicing yeah. Dhamma. Okay. Being alone can cause depression, or what, what, what can you, you share with them? So depression is a clinical term. Depression doesn't mean sadness. Depression doesn't mean being tired. Mm. Depression doesn't mean being lonely, mm. actually. Depression is a combination of many things. When many things come together, this is called a clinical depression, right? Mm. I think nowadays, we confuse sadness and depression. Some oh. people who have depression, actually, they don't feel really sad. No sadness, mm. but maybe they feel like, oh, I'm not too hungry. I can't sleep well, mm. right? I don't feel like doing work. They're just kind of at home, like maybe like no purpose, right? Or very tired. Some people, when they feel depression, they're just always tired. And mm. you ask them, how are you? I'm okay, but I'm just, I have no energy. Like I don't want to do anything. That's also depression, right? So just because you're sad doesn't mean depression. Mm. And also if something very bad happened in your life, that's definitely not depression. If your mom or dad died or your wife or someone and you're really sad for two or three months, that's mm. not depression. That's called mm. grief. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And grief is natural, you know. If right now someone comes and tells me that my mom died, I'm going to feel some grief, you know. It's natural. Everyone feels that. Uh, disappointment also. Being disappointed is not depression. Mm. Maybe you don't get good grades. Maybe you don't go to the university that you want to and you feel disappointed and sad, right? That's not depression. Depression is when you can no longer live your life normally, mm. right? Something's happened, and now you can't go to work. You can't go to school. Mm. You don't want to eat. You can't sleep. You're feeling sick. That is depression, right? You might feel real, real sadness, deep sadness, a lot of pain, but that's not depression. Mm. That's called deep sadness, <laughs> a lot of pain, yeah. right? So depression means when you can no longer function, mm. right? Something's happened. You can't do anything anymore. Right. And here's a misunderstanding about suicide, too, especially for men. Mm. Many men who commit suicide, I think close to half are not even depressed. They don't have depression. Mm. They don't have sadness. Mm. It's usually they feel too much pressure. Mm. So for men, especially when they're under too much pressure or they feel hopeless, like there's nothing I can do with this life. They'll tend to start thinking more suicidal thoughts because what's the point of living? Right. Mm. What's the point of this? So actually, depression and suicide don't are not together all the time. Mm. A lot of time for men, uh, the uh, suicide comes from not having any, any options. They think, I have no options in this life. Mm. It's better to end my life, right? Mm. So those are some different things. Uh, women in general, you know, girls uh, tend uh, to fall into depression more than men. So that is a true. It's more likely that a, that a woman mm. will feel depressed uh, than men, right? And it's more likely also that women will have suicidal thoughts and try suicide more than men. But uh, men are more likely to actually be successful in suicide, right? Mm. And that's because of the what they call aggression factor. When men do try to commit suicide, they'll grab a gun, they'll go to a bridge, they'll do something very violent mm. where it's very likely that they are going to die. Mm. But when women try to commit suicide, it's usually in a soft way like take pills or mm -hmm. try to drown themselves in the bathtub, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not successful at the suicide, <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't end up Gentle doing it. suicide. <laughs> yeah, they tried, but they couldn't do it, you know? Okay. Okay. So that's the difference between the male and, and female uh, rates of suicide and why suicide happens. But yes, let's not confuse sadness, even if it's very deep, painful sadness with depression. That's some Depression and sadness are not the same thing. Okay. Also grief. You know, if you lost someone that you love or maybe someone you find out has cancer and you feel very sad, that's also not depression. Mm -hmm. Depression means you can no longer live the life you want to live, right? And sometimes that has sadness, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that has even anxiety. Anxiety comes with, with depression, right? Mm -hmm. But most of the time it has to do, you notice, because you feel very tired, you feel very sick, you can't sleep well, you're not going to school, you're not going to work, uh, you don't have like meaning in your life mm. what's the point of doing all these things those are more likely to be signs of depression okay. than feeling pain mm. 
you know, disappointment. I think a lot of times we confuse disappointment and sadness and grief with depression. And if you experience long enough, maybe one or two years of sadness, it can lead to depression because you'll say, what's the point of being alive if I'm always sad? Right. Then then you start going into depression. But uh, yeah, so I I just want to let everyone know that being sad is normal, even if it hurts. Mm. Everyone gets sad. Mm -hmm. Right. Feeling grief. It's also normal. Everyone feels grief, right? Uh, feeling disappointed. Maybe I didn't get the grades I wanted. Mm-hmm. I didn't get into the university. That person doesn't love me in return. I love. I told <laughs> them that I love them, but they didn't say anything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That hurts. I know it hurts, but that's not depression. That's you know? not depression. That's not depression. <laughs> that's something different. So I think we have to be careful with our words because on social media, everyone's putting depression. Yeah. No one knows what it means. They're, okay. What they're trying to say is that I have a lot of pain. Yes, you do. That's right. You do have a lot of pain. We can't deny that. That's the truth. But let's be careful and not say depression. Just be honest and say, I'm in a lot of pain. I think that's the best thing to say. Yeah. So what what can we deal with the depression, real depression? Mm-hmm. What can we deal with that one? So the best thing actually found is community. Okay. Uh-huh. When you're in community, that's the number one protective factor. Actually, community helps for almost everything. <laughs> when you feel When you're alone or you feel alone, everything becomes more difficult. Right. Even mm. doing your homework, if you have no support from your community, becomes more difficult. Mm. Uh, so the most important thing is to have a group of people that you can trust. Mm. That's the most important thing. They call it a protective factor, something that protects you from going deeper or even from feeling depressed in the beginning. Mm. But uh, what about if you don't have a community, right? And you're already feeling depressed. You should go look for help. Mm. The, the sooner you go look for help, the more likely you are to recover. The people who don't look for help, unfortunately, most people wait six months, a year, two years before they get help for their depression. Mm. And by that time, that pattern that happens in the brain uh, gets reinforced. It becomes very strong. So it's very difficult then to overcome your depression because you've been letting it stay with you for so long, right? It's hard work to get rid of it after you've done it for so long. So the best advice is that as soon as you start seeing that you're not going to school, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well... You're feeling sad. You don't have any purpose in life. At that time, maybe talk to a teacher, right? Or uh, talk to someone that you trust. I'll tell your doctor even. Sometimes doctors can help you too. So get help as fast as you can. So mm-hmm. first, community. Try to have a good uh, supporting community. And if you don't have that, or if you do have it even, try to get help as soon as you can. Get rid of your pride. Some of us have too much pride. We don't know when to ask for help. We're scared to ask for help. Get rid of your pride. Mm-hmm. If you don't feel good, ask for help. That's going to be the one of the most important things to help you overcome real depression. 